How are you everybody who is watching this fantastic video? I'm very happy to have you today. My name is Olenjelai Mokota Yaino Singo from beautiful, fantastic countries that call Tanzania, eastern of the African continent. We are very happy to have you today and we have prepared a very good uh, bread for you in order to feed your mind, to feed your soul, and even to feed your understanding so that you may get the right information. So well, I'm still, I, I'm still sounding at the same place, at the same location, at the same uh, conducive place for you. That is called the, uh, our online undergraduate Polytechnic Institute of Tanzania Square Bracket College July M. So let me take this opportunity, whether you're a national or international viewer, I'm, I'll welcome you uh, into our online platforms or into our classes or our sessions or our lectures where that we are lecturing uh, students of undergraduate level and even students of ordinary diploma level and all the other students we are lecturing also about the word of God. And um, again, whether you're a national or international viewer, you're a parent or you're a student, you, uh, possibly you might be a student, you might be a parent, you're a guardian, or a sponsor, or maybe might be a national student who are doing, doing the undergraduate studies in engineering and science, or possibly you might be a grad, uh, undergraduate from other countries, with, uh, I call them international students. So I know that uh, you might be having so many questions concerning about the achievements of your vision. Well, because we know that, I know, and even yourself that you know, uh, in the field of engineering and science that there, there, is, there is very important fundamental subject which is called mathematics, which actually that you have to master it in, in order for you to enjoy your life, okay? Okay, so it's very important for you to notice and even to know. Simply just call me Sir Ole Jolai. I know that you might be a student who is watching this program. If you're not a student, possibly you might be a teacher. If you're not a teacher, possibly you might be a parent of some of the uh, children who are in an graduate level. We know that when you are doing uh, any programs regarding on the engineering or science, we used to encounter one of the fundamental subjects that called the mathematics. And even for the many years, many people they used to believe, especially in Tanzania, that mathematics is a national disease. We, just, we used to say in Israel that the sabun is somola, That's not true. I disagree. Mathematics is not a national disease, but mathematics is a very important tool to solve our national real life problems. So I know that possibly you might be having uh, might be having some troubles or some challenges on going through different modules or different courses of uh, higher engineering and the uh, higher engineering mathematics or uh, higher scientific mathematics for undergraduate students. So some of the questions that how can you understand, how can you master, how can you solve the tutorial questions, how can you understand clearly the concept which have been mentioned in the course outlines. So you have so many questions, how you can get well prepared for the exams, how can you understand that, how, what should you extract as a civil engineer in order to apply in a field of field engineer, in a field of field of civil engineering. So the vision we have in online Undergraduate Polytechnic Institute of Tanzania is uh, is we like we have an assignment to teach, to train, to incubate, to lead, to mentor, and even to encourage and motivate some of the students who will be ready to take uh, to extract knowledge in the classroom instructions uh, in the engineering and science courses to combine that knowledge with the knowledge of the Word of God written in the Holy Bible in order to solve real life problems. So that division that you have, I'll be reminding you uh, often because real that's what used to remain in my mind. And that's what also I would like to write in the mind of all my students because they have to understand that they cannot succeed in our present life or in these present new seasons of life uh, if they will be only depending on the intelligence or understanding or the knowledge that they have captured or they have, uh, or they have, they have learned during the year school time. So again, you need another, another knowledge that we call the knowledge of the Word of God in order to combine these two skills and then solve either small scale uh, real life problems or intermediate scale real life problems or even large scale 
are uh, uh, real life problems. So regardless of the what the scale is, the issue is in your community, in your family, in your village, in your district, in our country that is called Itanania. We are waiting the best solution from you. And we have to believe that you can do it. And we are waiting you to take your position, to get well prepared and then solve those problems. So actually, so our main focus here will be thinking on how we can apply, how we can understand the love, high engineering and scientific mathematics, and also how we can apply this piece of information in our daily life. So we have some departments in online and Ivory Polytechnic University of Tanzania, square bracket of July M. I would like also to simultaneously welcome you into one of our YouTube channels where you can find all our resources. That's called online and Ivory Polytechnic Institute of Tanzania, square bracket of July M. So where well, we have some departments, one of the departments is called the High Engineering and Scientific Mathematics. In these departments, right now, we are teaching 12 modules or 12 courses. Four modules from the University of Dar es Salaam, four modules uh, four courses from the University of Dar es Salaam. Uh, and then uh, we, have, uh, we are teaching also four modules from the Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology. And also we are teaching simultaneously uh, four modules from the University of Dodoma. So today we are learning the modules called uh, several variable calculus. This is the module, uh, the course which, are, uh, which is usually taught at the University of Dar es Salaam uh, for the second year students. In the, uh, in the first semester. Not only Dar es Salaam uh, University, uh, just okay, University of Dar es Salaam that could have these models. There are so many institutions, all colleges, uh, institutions, colleges, and OT and universities which have adapted the curriculums of 40 of University of Dar es Salaam. So that's why that these four courses will be equipping all the students who are in different institutions or colleges or universities which have been accredited by Tanzania Commissions for University that we call the TCU. Okay, so well, I've given you piece, uh, important piece of information. Uh, I believe that they have gone through, uh, they have gone through uh, our previous session or our previous lectures, but you can access them in the uh, in the comment section and on in our YouTube channel. So I believe that you've done a great thing, actually and we are prepared to do against other great things here together. So I have a good news for you. So let us start our session. So this is, uh, we are still, we're still in the first chapter about called functions of several variables. And to, in this lecture four, I'm going to teach about continuity and discontinuity of several variables functions at a point. Because you can have continuity, or you can check continuity or discontinuity of the particular function, uh, 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 in, in, the, in the interval, maybe from 2 less than x less than 4. So that's an interval value. So there are so many values of x in this today. So let me just do the quick review and then we go for the today's session or today's lecture. The quick review to link this lecture for with the lecture three. So let me do or give you a quick review, the quick review of lecture three. In lecture three, we have been, uh, it has been titled as limiting, limiting of what? So called the limiting of several variable function. Limits of several variable function. If you do remember that we say, uh, we say that in, uh, given, we say that for the two variables, we say that the limit, so say the limit, hello. The two variable function, which is f of x comma y, can exist if that if the limit x comma y as x comma y approaches x when y is equal to zero of our function which is f of x comma zero as is equal to what is equal to something else. So this is equal to L. Again, we have to find limit of our function as x comma y approaches to zero comma y or forty of f of y comma zero. Okay. So this is equal to. So we say that if the limit, let's say limit one, this is limit two. 
if limit one is equal to limit two, then the function is continuous at that point. No. Now the limits of the function exist, not continuous. So if this the conditions, this condition is true, then we say that the limit of the function exists. So for the limits of the function to exist, we say that this limits of left hand side should be called the limits of right hand side. That's all. And then we did some examples with you. I believe that you have gone through. Okay, so we say that this is equivalent to the limit of left hand side in case of a single variable function. And this is equivalent to the limits of right hand side in case of the uh, limit of the single variable function. But here we are dealing with this multivariable function, so this is the two variable function. So that's all about the limit. So in case you missed it, uh, this lecture three is still in our YouTube channel at called online undergrad for the Institute of Tanzania Square Market of Life. So today we are still in the same topic. We are still in the same uh, surrounding environment. But today let me teach you, ladies and gentlemen, about continuity and discontinuity of uh, several variable functions. Okay, so that's today's session. First of all, uh, let us let me begin with this uh, continuity because the fundamental of several variable function is single variable function. Continuity and discontinuity. Continuity and discontinuity of what? Of single variable function. Single variable function. You have to listen carefully. Single variable function. So we say that, we say that if you do remember that, first of all, we say that if limit as x approaches to a bar of ffx is equal to limit as x approaches to a positive of ffx, then that should be equal to the FFA. That is if what if FFX is if x is continuous at x. So if that one is equal to that one, so we say that then FFX is continuous at t. So because it's the limits of left hand side and limit of right hand side, we use right in general. Because I'm also teaching calculus, basic calculus. Okay, limit as x approaches to r, <coughs> x approaches to, to r of the particular function f of x, this will be equal to f l, and this is equal to f of 40 when x is equal to n. So this is the very important condition. So we say that otherwise. Otherwise, right? So that otherwise, right? Otherwise, we mean that otherwise, f of x is discontinuous at what at point a. Point a. So that's the. Uh, all about authority, continuity, and discontinuous. So otherwise, it's the discontinuous. At that point A, and if this is the conditions is true, then it is continuous. So don't make jokes. Don't just assume that I know that. No. No practice. Take a special of error. You are learning now. You are learning now. Okay. So, another point that we have to remember after having this. So, we just used to conclude that a function is continuous at that point or is not continuous. A function continuous or not discontinuous. So if this is a case now, and the, because remember that in order to have this uh, formula, we have to find limits of left hand side and limit of right hand side. 
Once we find their equal, then they will take this T, which is equal to L. Then we have to find F of A. We take F, then we substitute in F of X. Right? We see that now how the work is interesting. Okay. Okay. So now let us, let me teach about continuity. If this is all about the single living, continuity. Continuity. Continuity and discontinuity. To variable function. So continuity and discontinuity. Continuity and discontinuity of two variable factors. Okay? What do we say? Okay, so now let us go to the continuity. Let me teach you about continuity uh, and the discontinuity of the two variable functions. So we have to listen carefully because here we have some special issues and these are really uh, higher engineering and scientific mathematics. We have never, I want just to tell you that all of these concepts of continuity limit, we have never discussed them or learned them during our advanced education. It's our first time to meet with them because I'm a graduate also for advanced education in Tanzania, and even, even yourself also, you are, come from high school and high schools. You haven't learned this stuff. So when we are teaching you, we are teaching you careful and you're teaching you step to step from the fundamental concept, we got the intermediate concept, and then finally we go for the advanced concept. So then, so you have continuity and discontinuity of the two variable functions. So then let me just de define. Okay, let me define. Let me give you the definition of what of continuity and discontinuity of the two functions. Okay. <coughs> So let me give you a definition of what of continuity. Definition of continuity of two variable, two variable function. Okay. So this is the definition that we say the function, the function f f x comma y means the function which have, has two independent variables is continuous this function is saying continuous okay continuous at the at the point uh, a comma b or some of the books they use x not comma y not okay it's not comma y not if if what? If the limit, if the limit, limit of what? Limit of f of x comma y, uh -huh. as x comma y approaches to a comma b or x naught comma y naught, right? Okay, is will be equal to the value of the function when we substitute. Value of x is equal to a, and value of y is equal to b. So that's the conditions for a function of two variables to be continuous at a point. These are the conditions that this condition should be obeyed. So let me just write it in, in a different ways. Welcome to enjoy the beauty of several variable calculus. This is beautiful. Calculus is all about mathematics. It's uh, one of the beautiful beautiful subjects that I love for the rest of my life. How about you? You love calculus? <laughs> you love calculus? Tell me in the comment sections, please, because I want to hear from you. Okay, 
So it means that in, with this condition now, with this condition, with this definition that we say that uh, FFX, comma, Y is continuous, okay, is continuous where? At a print, at a print, which print? For instance, that if you say that A, comma, B, we'll be using this one, or maybe uh, some of the books they can, I saw that they're using X not, comma, Y not, the same, right? So then we say that then it means that the limit as x comma y approaches to a comma b of the function of the two variable function of the two variable which is x comma y this should be equal to the value of the function when you substitute a comma b so this is the general formula you have to keep my dear undergraduate students for the rest of your life so again uh, this condition or this definition might be, we might define like this one, that limit, we might define it like this, that limit as what, as x comma y approaches to x naught comma y naught of a function which is depending on the two variables x comma y, if this one is equal to f of x naught comma y not so then these are the or this is the value of the function okay So this the situation is the situation uh, that's the definitions of what he, of continuity of what he, continuity of the functions depends on the two variables. So from this factor, either this factor or this factor, we have three conditions. So let me teach you, ladies and gentlemen, conditions for a two variable a two variable function or any function to be continuous to be what continuous at what at the print at the print we call it a comma b there are three conditions which a function has to obey in order for it to be continuous at a point, at any point, or at that point that we are discussing. Let me, ladies and gentlemen, present the first condition. You can pause the video and mention those conditions because possibly uh, I taught you also in the uh, uh, continuity of the single variable function, right? Single variable. So I taught you those three conditions, which are very important. And the functions has to obey all of those conditions. In case that only, or in case that a function to obey two conditions and is obey only one condition, then the functions is going to be discontinuous. Okay. So the first condition we say that we have this one. Okay. Let, let us start just from what we have. But we saying the first condition. First condition is the limit L of of the function which is f of x comma y f x comma y should be exist should exist otherwise if it's not existing should exist okay as what as x comma y approaches <coughs> approaches to a comma b what does it mean limit as x comma y approaches to the print, the defined print which is a comma b, and our function is f of x comma y. Okay, this should be exist. So L log should be exist at the first condition. Okay, the second condition is very important also. It means if the limit of function does not exist, 
then that function is discontinuous at that point, not in the entire x axis or y axis, but at that point. The second condition, we say that the value of ff x is equal to a and b is equal to b should be b defined. Should be defined. If it is undefined, then that function is discontinuous at that point. The value of FFA comma B should be defined. Should be defined where? Should be defined in at that point. Okay? At the second condition. Okay? Okay, should be defined at T. The value of FFX comma Y. Okay, should be defined at what? At 20 A comma B. Should be defined at 20 A comma B. Right? That's the case. Then the same condition now is very important now. We say that the value of limit of the functions of the two variables f of x, uh, f of x comma y, okay, as x comma y approaches approaches to approaches to the point a comma b should be or must be should be the value of that function should be equal should be equal to that of that function should be equal the value of the limit of the function f of x comma y as x comma y approaches to a comma b should be equal to the value of what value of f of x comma y okay comma y at 20 at a comma b what does it mean we say the limit of the function, first of all, as x comma y approaches to a comma b, this limit, first of all, should exist and should be also equal to the value of the function when x is equal to a and y is equal to b. So those are the three conditions for, uh, for, for, <coughs> for uh, two variable functions to be continuous at a particular point. So you say that in against that day, you say that if any of that condition is, how many conditions? If any of these three conditions is disobeyed, then the function is discontinuous at that particular point. Then the function is discontinuous at that particular point. Then the function is discontinuous at that particular point. So I say that if comma one can okay, disobey disobey n of the conditions mentioned above mentioned above then f of x is discontinuous discontinuous at 20 can be continuous at other point but it is discontinuous at point a comma b at the concept so you say that if f of x <coughs> Y disobeys any of these conditions. So how does it disobey? First of all, you might find that you'll be given a function where the limit of the functions of, of the function x comma y as x approach as x comma y approaches to a comma b does not exist. So if the limit of the function doesn't exist, then that function is continuous at that point. <coughs> Again, you might find the limit of the function exists. The limits of the function of the two variable function, or the function of the two variables exist. 
but now you find maybe the value of the FFX comma Y is not defined at A comma B. So it's undefined. Then from there, we conclude that that function is discontinuous at that point. Again, you might find that the limit of the function existing, the value of FFX comma Y is defined at A comma B, but now the value of the limit of the function FFX comma Y is not equal to the value of the function when x is equal to a and when y is equal to b. So if this is, for example, that you find again, so you see those three possibilities where you can find that and we can state or you can conclude that the functions are discontinuous because of those conditions. So you say that if for this for, for continuity, you say that if, uh, if the function, which is x comma y, is discontinuous. Is discontinuous at what? At a comma b. Then we say that limit. We we'll find that limit as x in approach comma y approaches to a comma b of the function f of x comma y. This one will not be equal the value of the function when x is equal to a and when y is equal to b. So this is the condition for this continuity. Mathematical condition, okay? So mathematical condition. So we can run with this one because I know you are an undergraduate engineer who is interested with uh, high engineering mathematics. So that's the case. So you see how uh, mathematics is beautiful. I asked you that. Do you love several variable calculus? Do you love high engineering mathematics? Do you love high, high scientific mathematics? If you hate it, possibly you met with wrong dealers or wrong teachers. So you have to start laughing even from today. You are not late. You can start laughing this beautiful subject so you can solve real life problems. Okay. So now we know the condition for the, the function of two variables to be continuous. And also we know the conditions which have to be disobeyed by the function in order for it to be discontinuous at a particular point. So ladies and gentlemen, allow me right now to give you the first example for this part. And this is according to the uh, lecture three. We added the homework, which was a example three. So this is example, example, example four. And this example four refer Udesium, I took it in, Udesium plus nuts. Uh, you have a slight postponing uh, for the two. So it was a homework question. Okay, it was a homework question, but I'm going to solve it in. And the question states like this one. Investigate. This is the homework for MT261, several variable calculus. So the question was saying that, investigate, you are the mathematician, investigate the continuity, <coughs> investigate the continuity, investigate the continuity of FFH, comma y, this is equal to it, twice xy, over, over x square plus y square at the print zero comma zero. So let us check. So the question asking that we have to check if this function is continuous at point zero comma zero. Are you ready? Are you ready? You can also pause the video and try to follow the steps that I taught you in lecture three, uh, where actually they taught you about how you can find limit of the function of the two variable function of the two variables. And then you have to understand to combine with the this intro uh, intro concept that I have taught you in this lecture four 
and then so you can solve the problem. So you can post a video and then try it on the on a rough paper. Then you click the buttons, the, the buttons of play, continue to watch and see your solutions, whether you are right or you are not right. And don't worry to learn from mistakes. So if you join me right now, I would like to welcome you in online undergraduate polytechnic institute of Tanzania Square Packet of the right end. We are teaching, we are training, we are incubating, we are supplementing materials to undergraduate students who are informal institutions or us who are studying open university. So we are trying to deliver some stuff that we know uh, to major minds. So then this is the question that we have. Let us solve it and then enjoy the day. You have to investigate that. So the first system, recall definition of continuity. Recall formula or sometimes in theory of limit we call it definition. So recall formula or definition of 40 of continuity, continuity, continuity of a two of a function of two variables. Okay, the functions of two variables. So what the definition state? State that limit as x comma y approaches to print a comma b when you have f of x comma y this is equal this should be equal to the value of the function when our print when uh, the value of x is a the value of b is b so suppose that it is the equation one okay <laughs> because i want to teach you how to so you have to enjoy this stuff this is suppose this is equation one then the second step the writing the general formula, we have to compare given dot given function and dot and standard dot standard definition. Okay? So to compare, what do we find? Here we have a comma b. So for our question, a is equal to zero, b is equal to zero. That's why that this we call to a comma b is equal to zero comma zero. So our print are zero comma zero. We have to start the continuity of the f of x comma y near to zero comma zero, which we call the origin of x y plane. Then again, we need what f of x, we have the, we have been given the rational function, okay? So we've been given the rational function, which is f of x comma y. So this is twice x1 of rt over x square plus y square. Okay? So next step, we go for the same step. We have to do it step to step, do it slow. The next step, we say that find first, because we say the first condition, the limit of the given function should exist as x comma y approaches a comma b. So first of all, find limit and limit of what of the function f of x comma so to find limit we say that okay so it means we have considered the right the left hand side of the given equation which is limit as x comma y approaches towards approaches to a comma b then we have f of x comma y okay this will be equal to r how can we find that limit First of all, we have to find limit as x comma zero approaches to what? As x itself. At the formula, as x itself. <coughs> this is x itself as x approaches to zero, f of x, so we keep, we keep one variable constant, which is y, for this case. This one should be equal, should be equal for the limit to exist. 
So we got the limit as y approaches to zero of what fl zero comma one. Then that response to be equal to the limit. So again, we have another equation. Afterwards, we go for the forces tape. The forces tape, let us find the limit as x approaches to zero of ffx comma zero. Okay? So how can we find it? Well, just like what we did in previous lecture. So limit as ffx comma zero, and x approaches to zero when our function now is twice x raise x is a rational function, but y is equal to zero of what over x square, which is still existing, plus what? Plus zero square. So then we say what? Limit as x approaches to zero of what? F of x comma zero is equal to what? twice x times zero, which is zero. In numerator, we have x squared plus zero, which is zero. So therefore, we say limit as x approaches to zero of what? f of x comma zero, this is equal to zero. Okay, so limit of one axis. This is called the limit along uh, x axis, where y is equal to zero. Limit along x axis, where y is equal to zero, exists and t is zero. So we go for the fifth system. <coughs> the fifth system, we say that let us find limit. You can pause the video and try to find limit. Uh, let us find. Let's find limit of the function as y approaches to zero, f of zero, comma one. How can we find that? Good. Limit as y approaches to zero. Uh, f of zero, so in positions, so you are looking the limits along y axis. So where x is equal to zero. So our function, we have it is twice. X it is zero today. Y is not zero. Then we have what? X is zero. Okay. X it is zero. Is it zero? Yeah, it is zero. Square plus what? Plus y squared, which is not zero. So two times zero times y is equal to what? Zero. Then zero plus y squared is equal to y squared. Answer is equal to zero. Ladies and gentlemen, you have noticed that the limit along x axis, the limits of the function x comma y are existing, first of all. So the limit along the x-axis exists, the limits along the y-axis also existing, and they have the same value. So from this formula, we say that from so six steps. Don't worry about the number of steps. Okay, so you say that the <coughs> form this fact that limit as x approaches to zero of f of x comma y 
this should be a of effects you went along my along my axis along x axis okay so this one should be equal to limit as y approaches to zero of f of zero comma one and this should be our if our case is equal to zero so we say that limit as x comma y approaches towards approaches towards approaches to zero comma zero or for of which function of place x y over x square y square this is it yeah this one is equal to zero you're not asked you have to check to investigate if the function is continuous at zero comma zero but this is intermediate step so you realize that you okay this limit uh this uh the limit of the function is equal to zero so we have to go to the seventh state and in this seventh state we have to just consider about what you have there okay so the seventh state we say that find the value of what find the value of f of x comma one Find the value of f of x comma y. So let us find the value of x comma y. Now t a comma b, which is equal to zero comma zero. So it means that simply you have to find to substitute the value for zero in our equation. So we find that this is two times zero times zero of what of a zero square a zero square so simply the response two times zero times zero is equal to zero and then zero times zero square is equal to what is equal to zero so we find that the value is indeterminate so first of all the value is what f of zero comma zero is is indeterminate in the indeterminate is indeterminate as what as we have zero over zero which is undefined so remember the three conditions we say that the limit should exist, then the value of the function at that point should be defined. <coughs> it should be defined. So then now we say that is zero over zero equal to it equal to it is it equal to it we have to, is it equal to zero no because the limits of it means the value is zero over zero. Then the limit is equal to what? zero. These are the two values. So if that the case, you say that we have limit as x limit as x approaches r comma y. So we say that limit, not limit actually, that you say that we just go like this one because 
Não sei o nome, só me disse tu vai nessa noite. E como? Só de afoizeita. Fanchen FF3 com a lá. Zico de 3, X e Y. Ova X square, a sua square. E is not continuous. So it's not continuous. T, zero, zero. So this function is not continuous at zero, comma, zero. Well, if you have any question or need to understand any question, ask me in the comment section, please, because I want to interact with you to see so many questions of yours. So it's not continuous at zero, comma, zero. Okay, so then we say that uh, we have that case, but I uh, have again another conceptual example. Was example of three, example four, example five. Question straight like this: Let f of x comma y. F of x comma y. Fx como a is equal to what? Is equal to cos y sin of x <coughs> Its domain is x is not equal to zero. The other one, in x is equal to zero. This is constant. I don't know if you have seen these questions properly. I think that let me write. <coughs> let me write to you now. The question, example, 60. Example 60, which is concept. Can the question state that let f of x comma y, this is equal used to write just like this, <coughs> is equal to cosine of y sine of x. 
And if you are enjoying the beauty of engineering mathematics, sine of x over x, its domain is x is not equal to zero. Then again, we have a, a secondary composite function, which is cosine of y, and this is when x is equal to zero. Right? So we say that if that one, or let that one say ffx is equal to that. Is ffx continuous? So the question now is ffx comma y. Okay? Is ffx comma y continuous at Continuous at what? Continuous at zero comma zero. So you have to state. This is the kind of the tricky question, but don't worry because I'm going to teach you how you can solve it. And basing that understanding, you might even solve some other new questions of the same state like that because it's a kind of the composite function. So this is the composite function, compresses two function. The first function is this rational function, but when x is not equal to zero. The second function is cosine is equal to y, but when x is equal to zero. Okay? So you have to be careful in this case. Solution. You can pause the video and try yourself to state whether the limits exist there or not. Solution. Okay. You say the first step let us recall the general form of the solution or the form now. Call the formula of what? <coughs> Just recall the formula of continuity of the function. Call the formula of continuity of the function. Because you have to check. So do you remember it? Say that this is limit s comma y then f of f x comma y. Okay. So this is approaches to a comma b. Uh -huh. So this is equal to our and also should be equal to f when x is equal to a and b and y is equal to. Okay, so from our formula, we have two composite functions, this one and this one, you cannot use them simultaneously. You have to use one. So this x is not equal to zero, it's a function that we'll be using to determine the limit. <coughs> okay. So you say, if this is the general formula that we are going to use in that case, we have two sides, this side and this side. So listen carefully. Suppose this is equation one. So listen carefully. Stop writing, listen carefully. The second state, we say that, in, well, consider right hand side of equation one. So the right hand side, we have limit as x comma y approaches to a comma b. A comma b of what? 
of f of x comma y is equal to r, which is equal to the root. Okay? <coughs> okay, so if that's the case now, we say that, okay, wow, well, we have that environment. So you have the initial function. Okay? The initial function. So as I say that, you will be using these functions to find the limits along x axis and the limits along y axis. We know this for the first case. Okay? So then we say that limit as x approaches to what? As x approaches to 0 of f of x c, comma 0. Okay, so this will be equal to the limit as x comma y. Okay, so if this is the case, we say that let us consider the left hand side, the left hand side of the equation one. We have that, so you have to deal. And the left hand side of equation one, that is defining the limit of the function of two variables. It's the limit of the function of the two variables. Okay? The limit of the two function of the two variables. So, this very interesting question, actually. Then, after considering this one, mean that uh, when we consider this, it uh, demands us what? Find what? Find limit of the function. So, to find the limits of the function, we say that we choose, okay, we choose this function, f of x, y, is equal to cosine of y, then sine of x over x when x is not equal to zero. Okay? When x is equal is not equal. So the function we are going to use to find the limit of the function is f of x comma y. Then this is equal to cos of y. Then multiply by sine of x over x. But under the condition that x is not equal to what to zero. It means x approaches to what to zero. Okay, so that's the choice. So if we find, uh, for example, we go for the steady state, we as mathematicians sometimes we try errors. So uh, the failure case, for example, the failure case, we can fail to find the limit of that function, the failure case. So the failure case is if we'll be looking for limit as x or the function as x comma y, Approaches to what? To 0, 0 of what? Of our f of x. But what is our f of x? Our f of x is cos of y. Okay, cos of y times what is sine of x over x. Listen carefully. So the failure case is in case that maybe we find limit as x approaches to 0. Okay, as x approaches to 0 of f of x. Come out x comma zero. So everywhere we have uh, we have what we have y we substitute it with zero. So here it will be cos of zero, which is one. Here remains the sine of x over x. So you find that limit as x approaches to zero of f of x comma zero. Cos of zero is equal to one. We apply the word sine of x over x, okay? Then again we say that limit as x approaches to zero of f of x comma zero, for this case, uh, it will be equal to zero over zero, which is indeterminate. So this equal to indeterminate. So this is the failure case, it's not true. We have to use some other mathematical concepts to simplify the expression before we find the origin the limit of the function. So if you want to be careful, you might conclude that the limit of the functions is not continuous. The limit of function does not exist. 
why you should simplify the function first before finding the limit. That's the principle. So the limits are along the x-axis has already failed because y is equal to zero. It's indeterminate. It does not exist. So for this case, it means that L does not exist. Because we don't know the value of zero as L. The second failure case, again, if we be trying to find limit as y approaches to zero, right? Then here we have FF. Uh, 0, comma, y, this will be equal to it. cosine of y, which we don't know yet. But whenever we find x, we put, we put 0. So whenever we find x, we put 0. Right? So then with this one, this also is the second failure piece. Approaches to 0. Of fault of f of 0, comma, y. This is equal to it. Is equal to cosine of y. Then sine of zero is zero, times zero over zero. So you find also limit as x approaches to zero, as y approaches to zero of the function when x is kept constant and y is varied is equal to zero over zero, which is in the term indeterminate. Indeterminate. So the limit does not actually exist. So L does not exist. This is in case you solve this question blindly. Those are a failure case, but students they can solve and finally they conclude that the limit does not exist. Why it's not true? So to avoid this failure case, we have to make sure that we don't do this mistake in exam from for the same state. Okay. It's better for you to go through it so that you may not do it. And then now, let me take you to the next step. We say that the fourth system. First step, we say that simplify the force office. Okay, first system. Say so simplify the given function. Before finding limit, right? That's very important. Can simplify a given function before finding the limit. And when we simplify, we have to recall all premier, all previous technique you have learned in all level so that you may use them effectively. And no need for you for you to get stuck for this all this subject that you've been learning. So to simplify, we say that let's forget the process of continuity first f of x comma y. Then we say that in, we have cos of y, then we have sine of x over x. Okay. So to simplify this function before even we speak about limits and the term, so say f of x comma i is equal to cosine of y, and then this is same x over x. Okay. But we've been dealing with limit, right? So say limit as x over y which is to AB <coughs> So to write this uh, function above in this format we say that we have to look for the limit as x comma y approaches towards 0 comma 0, then we have cosine of y, then we have sine of x. So this is the rational function which is the multiple of the two trigonometrical function. 
Okay? So you go for the fusip state. Okay? Fusip state. Say that. Separate. Two function. Half. We have to deal with looking the limit as x comma y approaches towards zero comma zero. Cosine of what? Cosine of y. Okay, cosine of y. And also another function is what? Name it as x comma y approaches to zero comma zero. <coughs> Closes to okay, approaches to zero comma zero. And here we have cosine of y. No, we have sine of x over x. So this is the product of two functions. Cosine of y, sine of x over x. No. As x comma y approaches to 0 comma 0, and our function is sine of x over x. So suppose that this is question 2, and this is question 7. So, you have to find the limit of the individual function and then we use the basic properties of means of the function to combine the two limits. Okay? So then what you say guys, you say that in now find limit as x comma y approaches to zero comma zero and here our function is cosine of y. So it means that if you place or we substitute the values which are near to zero uh, especially on the uh, along the x axis. So then we say that if you substitute there or if you find the limits uh, as x comma y approaches to zero comma zero of cosine of y, this will make you say that limit as x comma y approaches to zero comma zero. Okay, of what? Of cosine of y. This is equal to the cos of zero to zero. Okay? So that the limits of cos of y is equal to y. And I go for the sixth step. Sixth step, we say that you have to find limit of the second function. Find limit of equationality, chain three. Chain three. Question <coughs> three. Okay, so find limit of the equation three. So to find limit of the equation three, we have limit as x comma y approaches zero comma zero of sine of x over x. Okay. We have to find limit as x comma y approaches to zero, but our function sine x over x. So we say the seventh step before the previous lecture I told you. Refer. <coughs> so we say that to refer, refer the small angle of trigonometrical function. Trigonometrical function. So for the small angle, we say, and if 
which you forgot, the contents are still on YouTube. You can check. For small writing, for a small angle, a small angle. So it's a for small angle sine of x to be equal to x for a small angle. So in that the case, you say that you have limit as x from y approaches towards approaches to zero comma zero, and then here we have sine of x over x. So the answer here will be looking for limit, but we have a limit already. I'm about to finish this example here for me for you and then uh, let you enjoy your day. Okay. So then the second part of the limit, we say that limit as x sum y approaches to 0, 0, of which function of sine of x over x. But this sine of x over x, we say that we can simplify that this limit as x sum y approaches to 0, 0, and then this one, we say that limit of what? Of sine of x. For the small angle sine of x is equal to x over x. So x over x is equal to what? 1. So we say that limit, limit as x comma y approaches to 0, 0. Okay, of what? X to y as x to y approaches to zero of sine of x over x. This is equal to one because x over x is equal to one. Right? So that is the second step. The eighth step. Say the eighth step. The step now, we have to find, suppose later this is the uh, one value of the limit. Okay, so you say the second, uh, the, the, the eighth step, you say that. So you say that check for limits. So check for limit, the first function, which was f of x on y approaches to 0, 0, of our function, which is f of x, but our function first of all was cosine of y, answer is equal to that. Then we found limit as x on y approaches to 0. This is equal to it. Here we have sine of x over x. This is equal to one. Okay. So these are not limits of left hand side and right hand side, whatever along x axis or y axis. So according to the composite function, we have the first function is multiple of other function. It's multiple of other function. So for now, we say that limit as x comma y approaches to 0 comma 0 of f of x comma y. And then this is equal to our function. So then we say that limit as what? Cos of y, sine of x over x. 
So to find that limit, find limit as x to the y approaches to 0, 0 of our function, which is cosine of y, and we have sine of x over x. This is equal to that limit as x comma y approaches to 0, 0, when you took one function, which is cosine of y. So its limit we found is 1. Then again, uh, <coughs> we discussed about the limits of the function as x comma y approaches to 0, 0, but this function now. And we found its limit also is equal to 1. So 1 times 1, it is 1. Okay? So the cost is 1, we say that 1 times 1 is equal to 1, okay? Okay, all right. So 1 over 1 is equal to, 1 times 1 is equal to 1, okay? Perfect. So then we go for the ninth step. I'm about to finish this lecture. The ninth step, we say what? Okay? Nine step, say the nine step. The nine step now, let us find FF 0, 0 value. So to find F of 0, 0, we came to, we have been given a composite function. Okay. Okay, so we have to find f of 0, 0. So remember the function will be given that it is limit as x comma y approaches to 0, 0 of f of x. Right? Of f of x. What that f of x? Say that. Find FF 0, 0. So this is equal to, we have to find, uh, we don't need even the concepts of limit. We have to record just our function. Our function was FFx, y. Okay, FFx, y. And then we have been given a composite function. Okay, we have been given a composite function. Listen carefully. The composite function cos of y, sine of x of our x when x is not equal to zero. Okay? And then the other function is cosine of y when x is equal to zero. So when you are finding the value of the function, when you are finding the value of the function, when you are finding the limits of the function, we used we used this composite function because at this point is only the point where x is not equal to zero. So you can use to find the limits as we approach f of x from x axis or from y axis at the concept that we have. So use this one to find limit. We still have this. Why, why are we given this function? The aims of us to be given this function is in order to find the value whether it is defined or not. So for that case now, we say that we want to find for f of 0, 0. But there we have x is equal to 30. x is equal to 0, right? So if x is equal to zero, the choice of our function won't use this one because we've used to find the limit or check the limit say that it's existing or it's not existing. But also this platform, we say that for zero comma zero, now we say that because we're finding for the value. So f of zero comma zero, this one is equal to cos of y good news. So the value of the function is defined and the value is 1. So value is 1, so we say that f of 0, 0 is equal to 1. So then we say that from the fact that limit as x comma y approaches to 0 comma 0 of what? 
of 0, 0. H address of 0, 0. And here we say that FFX, okay, X to 0 approaches to 0 of a function. This is equal to 1. And also, this is equal to FF. And x is equal to 0, and y is equal to 0, is equal to 1. Okay? So the condition is obeyed. The value of the function is equal to the limits of the function. Also, the limits of the function exist, that's why you formed, which is equal to 1. So therefore, we say that ffx, comma 1 is continuous. This function is continuous at 0, 0. So you have to confirm, and we are shown there. So now it's the time, the good time, the good time to end the lecture, to end the lecture, to end the lecture, to end the session. To end the session, wonderful enough. So that's what example six. Let me give you. Example seven, which is homework four. Okay, homework four. The question asks you that even if a taxi come alive. Approaches to approaches to zero, comma zero. Of twice x y. No, I give you this function. Of sine of x square plus y square. Over, over what? Over x square plus y square. Okay? So then the question is, plus, we say that is ffx comma y continues at 1 comma 0. So tell me. Tell me. So try that question. So the print has been changed is one comma zero. Okay, so this is a good moment now. It's the end of lecture four. I know that so many students are very happy when they hear that it's the end of the lecture, even if they didn't understand. But the good thing of the digital technology, you can review this lecture and watch several times and get every concept comes from your mind. I know that this is the new concept for the men of the students that are who are in an undergraduate state. Uh, and a great st stage. I know that in going through this lecture or going through these contents, once it won't be efficient for you to understand every concept, but you have to go through it several times, maybe twice or three times to understand everything and keep in your mind. You should not keep the materials of mathematics in the exercise book. Try your level best to pull up all the contents in your brain. So this is the end of lecture four. I really thank God for everything that he has done to me. He created me in his own image and likeness. And that's not, that's not enough also. He died on the cross for me. He loves me so much. And then he gave me, or he built the teaching industry in me and the teaching ministry in me. I am a teaching and teaching is me. So I give him all the glory and all the honor. And even yourself who are watching from any country, whether you're watching these programs uh, internationally or nationally, then I would like just to thank you and I appreciate about your time. And I thank you also for the questions that you've prepared that you're going to ask me in the comment sections of this video. And I really appreciate your love on higher engineering and scientific mathematics. I believe that also you're going to share with your colleagues and your classmates the links of this video, the links of the channel. You read the descriptions below, you like this video, 
just as rating that maybe you find it helpful or not. I believe also you give me the feedback that I understood you, sir, or I need some clarifications in a particular point. So everything is possible and nothing is impossible. But remember that all of this information that I'm teaching you, you have to think how can you use them uh, in order to solve a real life problems that is still waiting for you. For example, this is my real life. I'm solving a real life problems here by combining the two knowledge, the informal and formal uh, knowledge from the form of, from from the educations or from the school education, and also private studies and the knowledge that I extracted from the word of God, combine them, solving these real life pro, uh, problems which people they need of from our present generations and future generations they need to being to being taught well and to be taught by using different teaching methodologies so they have to master the subject of engineering mathematics. When the scientific mathematics, which are we call I call them universal subjects. Every undergraduate students have to study these studies, especially that if you are taking a career in engineering or in in science. So that's the end of uh, uh, we we are learning about several variable calculus. We are still in the beginnings. So we still have some other chapters. That's just chapter one. So many issues and so many new concepts in in actual that. In, uh, interesting concepts are still on the way, so stay tuned, stay focused, ask the questions. Remember to subscribe because we are going to upload more than 500, and every day we are going to add up at least to one video. Do you want to be notified by the YouTube community once we upload a new video in a, in a second day because we are uploading a, at least one video in a day? So we want you to get notifications continuously because we are still adding contents in our YouTube channel. Remember that to hit, to just click the buttons of subscribe, don't forget it, and then choose the options of the bell, and then choose the options of all. So you get notifications once we upload any new video in our YouTube channel. So may God bless you, I'm always praying for you. But again, it's another thing that which is very important for all undergraduate students. In case you feel from your heart that you want to offer God the free willing sense giving offering because for these programs that He brought to you, real expensive program, uh, if I could uh, charge you money, I could charge you so, uh, a lot of money according to the value of what I'm teaching or I'm doing. But this is my free willing sense giving offering to my God who have built the teaching industry and has built the teaching characteristics and the teaching, teaching lifestyle life in my heart. So even the initial cost and the money that the, the financial that uh, I invested in, in, uh, in different uh, uh, much media equipments that are required for this program, it's my offering to my father who is in heaven. Because I know that if I offer him my face, then he's going to bless me abundantly and he's going to bless even my future generations after myself. So this is the generational program and then there's no need for you now to get to hustle and to cram uh, engineering and scientific mathematics where the light is already in your house. And the light is lighting right now in the entire country of Tanzania.